everybody to the October 14th, 2020 meeting of the City of Brentwood Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, is there a desire to have the Pledge of Allegiance or is there an objection to waiving that uh, requirement? No objection. Okay, seeing none. Uh, the record will reflect that the commission is uh, very respectful of the country, but is waiving the uh, Pledge of Allegiance for this meeting due to it being by Zoom. Roll call, please. I can go ahead with that. I don't believe John Neuenberg is with us, so I will call roll. Uh, Commissioner Bilderbach? Here. Commissioner Daming? Here. Commissioner Favaza? Here. Commissioner Jacobs? Commissioner Moore? Here. Commissioner Moran? Oh, I'm here. Commissioner Nelson? Here. Commission, Commissioner Neuenberger? Commissioner Ritter? Present. Commissioner Shearing? And Commissioner Shipley? Here. All right, very good. Looks like we have a quorum. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the August 12th meeting minutes. Has everyone had an opportunity to look at those minutes and are there any revisions to said minutes? Is there any objection to approving those by acclamation? No. Seeing none, they'll be approved. Uh, we have one item under old business. We uh, neglected to vote on the slate of officers. Uh, so we do need to take that up. Uh, my understanding is that we have uh, three positions, the chair, the vice chair, and the secretary, correct, Ms. Kirkemeyer? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Uh, my understanding is that uh, Michael Daming was nominated for the chair, vice chair, Mr. Shipley was the nominee, and the secretary was Mr. Nuremberger, correct? Correct. Okay. Are there any other nominations for any of those positions? Is there any objection to that slate of officers uh, being confirmed? All objection. right, seeing, seeing none, uh, that slate will be confirmed. We have one item under new business this evening, which is a conditional use permit to allow a swim school for the property at 8071 to 8075 Manchester Road. Is the applicant present? I am, this is Craig O'Halloran, good evening. Great, good evening, Mr. O'Halloran, good, I'm glad we're making you uh, making your video active. Uh, so Mr. O'Halloran, if you could just introduce yourself, your team and your your application and you can proceed. Sure, thank you for that. I am joined this evening by Paul Meyer of Paul Meyer Architects, uh, James Parks of Castle Contracting, uh, Graham Robb of Foss Swim School. This is our Director of Facilities for New Development. And I'm not sure if we have any other participants from our group uh, on the call, but uh, if they join in the course of this uh, introduction, I'll make sure to introduce them to the team. Um, if it's okay, can I share my screen? It's okay with me. We'll see if I can figure this out. <laughs> at the very bottom, a second. It'll, at the very bottom, it'll say share screen. Yeah. Oh, I have to change the security settings. So if you'll bear with me, I'll come right back to the meeting in 30 seconds. Thanks for your patience. No problem. I may have to be co-host again since I just joined the meeting to be able to, to activate the video. Mm -hmm. I think I'm mute. 
Here we go. <clears throat> All right. Thanks for your patience. I appreciate it. As I indicated, Craig O'Halloran Foss Swim School. Um, I've been with the organization for about 15 years. Um, I thought it would make sense just to give you a quick reintroduction to the swim school. We provided you a narrative as part of the documentation that we submitted last month, but just to give you a high level overview of who we are and, and what we do. Um, we started the business back in 1993. John and Susan Foss started in a church pool of 12 students. Um, we're teaching around 28,000 kids uh, weekly now. Um, you know, when we started the swim school, we were one of the very few private swim schools that was operating in purpose-built facilities. And really the goal was to redefine the, the swim lesson experience through proprietary curriculum. Uh, John Foss developed all of our curriculum, purpose-built facilities and a professional swim lesson experience. What we mean by that is we only hire adults, those 18 years and older. And their first year of uh, instruction or first year of working with us, they get over 100 hours of training. So we're really, really proud of the uh, things that we've put in place to, to develop a professional organization that serves communities across the upper Midwest. Obviously with any swim lesson program, we're grounded on safety and providing the opportunities for people and communities to, to enjoy the enjoy water and, and uh, experience the love of water. It opens up so many opportunities for, for young children that know how to swim, that can go to swimming pools and lakes and, and really experience all that the environment has to offer. Quickly, where we're at right now, as you can see from the map, we're in the upper Midwest. We entered the St. Louis market back in, in late 2018 and, and planned to, to develop several facilities in, in St. Louis. Very happy to have brought our product to, to the market and obviously very excited about the opportunity in Brentwood, Missouri. Um, well, why do we believe Brentwood is a good fit for us? When we, when we, sat out, when we sought out uh, St. Louis as our next big major market, Working with local developers and lo local brokers, the first thing he said is you need to be in Brentwood. Uh, the Brentwood community is one that's, that's, that's grounded on a quality of life, a quality of education, uh, and provides opportunities uh, for its citizens to, to um, experience um, you know, positive uh, environments. And, and we believe Brentwood to be uh, a market that, that was uh, targeted early on in the process. We're excited to have this opportunity um, it's obviously that Brentwood, uh, based on all the literature that we're seeing, is committed to reinvesting in its residents and its businesses through its current initiatives, which include Brentwood Bound and the Redevelopment Project. Um, we share the same goal, providing the community with opportunities to grow. And we think we'd be a nice fit for this community. We think we'd bring something to the community that it doesn't uh, currently have and are excited to continue that conversation. And uh, additionally, you know, more business, the, the, the demographics and, and the data support that this location will be a standard for other FOSS swim schools in the Missouri market. You may ask why FOSS? Um, we believe this particular location in our business could be a, a great uh, start to the redevelopment plans, potentially driving additional interest in the adjacent projects. Current land has been vacant for 12 years. Uh, this project could be and will be, uh, we believe, a nice gateway to the city of Brentwood. Um, of note, our customer base travels up to 15 to 17 minutes one way to attend our lessons. We believe there's an opportunity to drive a lot of customers and a lot of young families to the Brentwood marketplace, thereby therefore driving traffic to, to other local businesses. And additionally, the swim school will create jobs, generate tax revenues, and support local community um, charity endeavors. Just to give you a little background on the development timeline, we've been looking at this particular, uh, these particular parcels for a good period of time. Um, early in 2019, we identified uh, this location as a, a potential good location for a FOSS swim school and worked through the balance of 2019 to execute a purchase agreement with the current bank that owns the, um, owns the land. Currently, we're in due diligence and, and that's taken us on a, a, a winding road, which um, um, I'm sure we'll talk about in the course of the conversation tonight. And you know, it's uh, October now, and we're excited to be in this first step of the approval process with the city of Brentwood, and, and hope that um, that this conversation and the ones that will follow in the in the coming weeks will support this project. And then, obviously, we're targeting construction in 2021, pending all approvals and, and getting everything worked out with the various uh, government. Uh, bodies that we need to work with. All of you uh, would have received the site plan as part of your package. This has been a, 
a monumental effort by the castle contracting team because we've relocated the building no less than three or four times based on information we received in the course of due diligence. The process has been delayed by a couple months uh, based on our communication and receiving word from the Missouri School uh, Sewer District on, on plans to add a uh, sewer line through the, uh, the property. Uh, we identified bedrock, which uh, poses challenges when you're digging a hole for a pool. Um, and we're working through all those challenges and it's been a coordinated effort among several agencies, including MoDOT, MSD and the city of Brentwood. And we're very appreciative of all those, um, all those parties working with us, with us to try and identify a solution that will work for this particular piece of land. Um, building design, we, we've learned over the years, uh, you know, 27 years of being a swim school, we've learned uh, what we need to provide our customers the, the best opportunity and the, the most quality opportunity to, to learn to swim. And uh, that includes quality finishes, a unique design based on using different materials and varying heights. Um, but we do, we designed it to maximize the natural light into the facility while maintaining privacy and an effective work environment. Here's a couple of quick uh, photos, just as a reference point. Uh, we just completed this project in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, which is just north of Madison, and it's nearly an identical design to the plans that we provided you in the course of um, uh, attending this meeting. Um, as you can see, we think it's a, a very professional building that, uh, that provides uh, a nice curb appeal and, and um, um, we've used the highest quality finishes in, in completing uh, this construction. You know, similar to the, what we've learned on the exterior of the building, uh, we've spent a lot of time and a lot of uh, work to identify what the interior of the building should look like. Um, you know, it's purpose built based on 27 years of experience with private uh, restrooms, private showers. Many of you, when you grew up, probably were in uh, swimming pools where it was community, you know, men's and women's locker rooms. Well, that becomes a challenge when you're teaching kids to swim and you've got a five-year-old daughter and the dad is bringing that child to, to lessons. So we're trying to create an environment where there's more privacy, uh, not only for the child, but for the parent that's trying to help the child. Um, we don't spare any expense on state-of-the-art pool equipment, filtration systems, uh, UV systems or secondary sanitation systems, and obviously using energy efficient equipment to, to minimize uh, you know, our um, impact on, on the environment and the utility services. Here's a couple quick photos of, of the most recent project that was completed in Madison. Um, it, as you can see, it's a, it's a much different pool environment than what you would see potentially at a, a, a high school or a, um, a local aquatic center. Um, the picture on the left is your, your front retail registration area. <clears throat> and then you can see through to the pool area and the pool is designed to serve the needs of Foss Swim School and teaching young kids to swim. So um, it's, not, it's not purposely built for lap swimming, but it's built for teaching young kids um, how to swim at shorter or in incremental distances so that we can move them from, um, you know, anywhere from five feet up to, to 60 feet uh, to give them the optimal learning experience. With that, I'll just say thanks to, um, uh, thanks to everybody on the phone call for allowing us to participate in this discussion and answer any questions you have. And, you know, a special thanks to those that have been involved in the process up to this point. Um, and thank you to the- Okay, well done. Nice presentation, Mr. O'Halloran. Uh, Ms. Kirkemeyer, staff report. Uh, thank you. So I was gonna go ahead and make some comments about the site itself. So everybody is aware that this is the site that's vacant that's located at the Northwest corner of Hanley Road and Manchester Road. As Mr. O'Halloran has said, this has been a site that has been vacant for a long time. It's a little over two acres in size. The property is owned MC Manchester Corridor Commercial District, and it's been zoned that way since we rezoned um, all of the parcels in the 353 redevelopment area back in, in April of 2019. So if you look at the MC district, what's allowed by, by right or by conditional use permit, recreational facilities, can be approved in the MC district by conditional use permit approval. So that's why the uh, application is before you tonight. And as you all are well aware of, in order to apply and have a CUP review, you have to have your site development plan. So um, what the plan proposes, the structures themselves do kind of have to be located more on the Western portion of the property. 
given that the eastern portion of the property, even after Brentwood Bound is, is completed and the flood mitigation work is done, there'll be a little bit of impact to this property, but for the, the most part, the flood elevations would still be the same and there'll still be um, sections of the parcel that would be located in the floodway and the flood fringe, or I'm sorry, the flood plain. So in order to um, kind of work through some of those floodplain development permit issues, that's another reason why you'll see on the site development plan, the building is proposed more for the west western portion of the property. The property does currently have two existing curb cuts from previous developments. And when staff worked with our consultants with CBB in the past and TWM in developing the right-of-way plans for the Manchester Road improvements, the right-of-way plans include that one of these access points could be still used, but the other one should be closed. And so that's what's proposed is to um, close the existing most eastern access point, but keep the western one open. This property can also um, benefit from a shared use agreement that they have or shared access agreement they have with the property owner to the west. So in order to see though this type of project, what impact it may have on Manchester Road, and adjoining streets, we have authorized CBD to do the traffic review and a parking evaluation for the project. And that was authorized last week. So we are um, anticipating the review to be completed on or around October 23rd. We also then, the landscape plan was submitted as part of this project. So we've also authorized Andy Frankie to do the landscape plan review. So that's underway right now too. And we're waiting for comments on that. Preliminarily speaking, um, MoDOT has approved using the more western access point versus the eastern one. And uh, at the end of the day, though, just given the property's location, where it is next to or along Manchester Road and near the intersection, both MoDOT and St. Louis County Department of Transportation will also have to go ahead and uh, more or less sign off on the site development plan and, and issue the appropriate permits. Um, the building elevations were also submitted with the project and um, like I said, the landscape plan, we will have to at some point um, review a photometrics plan and um, we have talked a little bit about signage as well, what their needs would be for signage if the project is approved. Uh, the one other uh, point that probably is, is worth mentioning is that in the staff report it was mentioned that part of our work that we're kind of coupling with the Manchester Road project or other streetscape enhancements. And one element of the additional streetscape enhancements that Brentwood is looking to do is to, as Mr. O'Halloran said, this is really the, the front door to the community. It's the gateway to the community. So one of the enhancements that's proposed was to build a city monument sign. And so in the staff report, we included the uh, proposed location of that, that sign and uh, also just the sign elevation itself, just for so you can get an idea of what um, is proposed there. So there is obviously still quite a few details to kind of work out with the project. So uh, just here tonight for the applicants to hear the discussion among the commissioners. And with that, if there's any more questions I can answer. Um, otherwise, that's the extent of my report at this time. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kamara. Yeah, the commission knows that this is the entrance to the southeastern portion of our community and we've been waiting for the the perfect user frankly uh the right user over the last has it been 12 years since that property's been vacant is that right i i think it was around 2008 so that's probably very close well, obviously no mike well, we thought we had the user with Truman Bank. They were gonna construct their headquarters on a good portion of that parcel and, and that didn't work out. I believe that failed. Uh, I believe that failed right around the time of the recession, 2008. Uh, then there've been other applicants the commission will recall. We've had a couple automobile uh, repair users that have submitted applications and commission did not think that they were the appropriate user. Uh, Commission will recall we spent a great deal of time on a apartment complex that was going to go in there and that ended up being approved but uh, ended up failing um, for financial reasons is my understanding. You mentioned the car wash? Well, the car? Right, right. Yeah, the car wash and we had an auto repair facility. So this uh, this property just does, it does not seem to be uh, 
eagerly uh, wanted and, and eagerly desired for development. So uh, I was pleased to see this this development. Frankly, this uh, this presentation I thought it was an impressive presentation. We've got a ways to go, but it was an impressive presentation. That being said, um, Ms. Bilderback, I believe that you are on the 353 Corporation, is that correct? Yes, I'm actually the chairman now. Okay. Well, Ms. Chairman, I believe that you've sent out a RFP for development in, for an area which includes this parcel, is that correct? Yes. The, I mean, not just me, obviously, the city sent out, and they sent out to a list, and then it was available. There were more folks that were requested, and I don't have the list in front of me, but I signed about 40, 40 50 letters, something like that. Okay. Well, in the spirit of candor, I just want to make sure the applicant is aware of that, that the city is seeking, actively seeking to develop this site, has sent out an RFP to develop this site, among other sites, uh, in, in, in conjunction with our Brentwood Bound project. Uh, so certainly those, if there is anything, and there may not be anything that's submitted uh, for this particular site, uh, but those would be applications that we would consider as well. But in the interim, my understanding is that we are anticipating receiving those applications sometime in the next few weeks, which will give us time to consider those to the extent they implicate this parcel, so be it to the extent they don't, then we'll focus on this application. Uh, but I do wanna make sure, frankly, in the spirit of candor that the applicant is aware of that and those will be additional concerns on the part of the commission, additional interests on the part of the commission. Were you aware of that, Mr. O'Halloran? Yes, sir. We were made uh, made aware of this RFP just uh, recently, within the last uh, several hours, actually. So we've had a chance to review it. Um, obviously, understand the position uh, of the Planning and Zoning Commission, and I appreciate the candor and uh, sure. explaining that this process has, has started. We'd hope that uh, we could continue down down the road of evaluating this opportunity because we believe this would be an ideal fit for this particular uh, parcel and, and would be a nice uh, introduction to the redevelopment plans that are being done in, in, on the Manchester Road Corridor. Okay, well, well said, and I agree. It is an impressive presentation, impressive set of plans that you submitted. And that being said, why don't we open it up to the commissioners for initial questions. No, understanding that we are waiting for a traffic study, we're waiting for a parking study, we're waiting for a landscaping study, uh, all of which we need to take up at a subcommittee meeting later on this month. So with that understanding, open it up to commissioners, Mr. Moran. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, this, this question is for Lisa. Uh, in previous applications, we've had uh, enthusiastic and um, spirited feedback from the neighbors and the property behind <laughs> up, up the cliff face there from, from, from this lot. I, I don't know the name of the road, Fawn Court off, off Melvin, live right by the radio mast. Have those people been involved in this so far? Have they had notification about this plan? And have you received any feedback from that neighborhood? The notices were sent out on October 5th. And uh, again, that would have included all owners of property that were within 300 feet of this parcel. And uh, we have not received any communications from anyone that would have received notice or, or even anyone. So there has been no correspondence provided to our office. Those go out by mail, Lisa? They go out by regular mail. Okay, so they, they may not have received them yet, right, given the current okay. service of the mail service, but okay. Is there a length of time they get to, to, you know, put in a response? Is it respond within 30 days of sending or anything like that? We don't regulate when they have to respond. Um, additionally, though, the um, agenda would have also been uploaded on the city's website. And because of all the virtual, and again, trying to still encourage engagement and that we, you know, we, we still have this process for a reason, the um, agenda always includes too that, you know, please send any correspondence to myself. I, I give my email and everything. So um, that would be another way for, for residents' businesses to be at least aware of the petition. But again, I haven't received anything to date. Okay, thank you. I just got a, question, a couple of questions, Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, for Mr. O'Halloran, as the, uh, the, sure. speaker, the, the petitioner. Uh, one is, I saw the opening hours. Are there, are there post hours opportunities to 
Does this, does this place get open up for parties, for pool parties after hours of the school or anything like that? Is that, is that in the plans? No, we don't, uh, we don't offer ancillary services like birthday parties or parties. Um, the hours that were described in the, uh, the letter that we sent are the hours of operation and 95% of the time that's uh, our learn to swim program. The other 5% might be uh, individual skill clinics or things that are concentrated on specific skills. So no parties. Okay, thank you. Does FOSS have a record of, do you have any, um, any history of like, partnering with, with local school districts? You're right in between Brentwood High School and Maplewood High School, well, the Brentwood and Maplewood school districts. Have you ever partnered with a school dist district to allow them to offer swim classes as part of their curriculum? Uh, we haven't, we've had some opportunities to do that where we became a challenge was the transportation of the children between the school and and our school but we'd be open to having those discussions with individual school districts as be, as um as there's interest okay. i think that will be a wonderful opportunity but we'll see, yeah, we'll see how that goes and and, and just uh it, are there any like competitors to you in the st louis region right now anybody i can compare you to or is this one, are you a one-off? Well, there, there is other learn to swim programs in the St. Louis market uh, where I think we differentiate ourselves is that we're all corporate owned. We're not a franchise business. So we have a, uh, a corporate office that manages all the locations in all of our markets. And we leverage the experience of, you know, some of us have been here for more than 15 years, leverage that experience of running learn to swim programs. So I think that's where we differentiate ourselves from our competitors. Okay, thanks very much. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. O'Halloran, are your elevations, is your building footprint the same from, I know you showed the one in Wisconsin, is it the same from, for each of your, your developments? It is not. Uh, we, we look at a variety of locations when we explore markets. Some of them may be in strip malls, some of them may be in, in big box retail places. In this particular uh, Location, it's a um, it's a ground up opportunity, which will be similar in footprint to the one that I showed the photos of in, in Madison. But um, most of our locations are um, are leasehold improvement type projects where we're building out an existing building. Yeah. All right, other questions from commissioners? Ms. Bilderbeck. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, if my head appears to disappear sometimes, it is because I'm looking at the plans because I have the big set. Uh, a couple of thoughts is my first initial look at the landscape plan. I, I like a lot of things about it. Um, obviously, we'll see as well what our landscape architect says, but as the commission knows, I like to personally get into the landscaping stuff, so I think it looks great. Um, another thought, and it kind of ties into, I think, a, what uh, Paul had mentioned uh, is the at the top of the cliff face, the residents that live there and, and kind of their interest on it. And there's only so much that can be done when you look down on a building. Uh, but I was just wondering about the plans for um, like screening of HVAC or what kinds of equipment would be on the roof as far as, I mean, definitely from uh, traffic along the roadway, but then if there's even anything that can be done from above it, um, and kind of tied in with that as a question for the applicant uh, would be, what would be the view of the backside of the building from up above from the back? And the reason why I ask that is, you know, if it's something that is going to be like a big view from the, the residents up above, even though it's on the back of the building, perhaps something could be done to break up the back of it. Uh, I think that the, the elevations and the building materials and, and all of that looks really good uh, from, from what I've been through so far. So I would ask that those two questions right now, I might have something else to say, Mr. Chairman, but those two questions of the applicant about uh, the plans as far as like um, screening relative to the rooftop and perhaps the, the back of the building related to the higher elevation residential properties. Yeah, thank you for your questions. If it would be okay, I'd like uh, Paul Meyer, uh, Paul Meyer Architects, to, to hop in and, and answer those questions for you. Great, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman and other commissioners. Uh, Paul Meyer. 
uh, Paul Meyer Architects. Uh, we've had the privilege of working with Boss Swim for uh, 10 years and doing all of their facilities and their uh, locations around the upper Midwest. Um, specific uh, to this project, this is a, you know, it seems like every project we work with them, there's always a uniqueness. Sometimes we, uh, whatever. This one has its own challenges um, from a site standpoint. Um, so, and I, and I appreciate the opportunity to talk about this, about the residential property. So the grade change from the north edge of our proc, uh, prop, uh, parking lot, uh, which is at elevation 453 to 454, uh, the grade line at the property line to the residential up above is 467. So it's a elevation change in grade of 13 to 14 feet between the two properties. So if we use that as the basis, um, we don't know of a, a way to effectively screen that with a building, uh, you know, a building wall to screen, you know, the, there's definitely rooftop equipment associated with a the pool. There's a large pool hand, air handling equipment. We can't change that reality. And so um, we're not sure we wanted to have that discussion with the, uh, with this group this evening to, to see what your recommendation would be. I know you have uh, screening requirements for that and we have tall parapet walls uh, planned as part of the building so that, you know, at grade uh, you're, we're screening the equipment, but I'm, I guess we're open to discussion about what the expectation really is for that. Well, I think that expectation would first start with taking a look at what we're what these people will be looking at. Do we have an, an elevation or a picture of, of what these people sort of the visual these people might be confronted with? Yeah, we do have uh, we do have uh, our building elevations as part of the submittal and that's something that you want me to put up on screen or yeah if you could that'd be great okay These are the four building elevations. Obviously, the south elevation here is the one facing Manchester uh, with the yellow accented uh, panels at the entryway. Uh, we come along to the east side, which would be the elevation that you see as you're heading west on Manchester. And then uh, the north side, or the view from the residential side, would be uh, the one that we're seeing here that I've got zoomed in. So I guess you don't have anything from the top down though, from, no, what, no, uh, from what they're from up above. Nope. And that was something, Mr. Chairman, that when Brentwood Square was done, I believe that we had asked for uh, those types of elevations where they had to, to do drawings based on what the, the folks would see, like from the different perspective of the different angle. Um, so maybe that's something we might be able to look at for, for site plan. But on the aspect that we're talking about here, this north elevation was what I was talking about. Um, if, you know, the view of the back of the building from the, the residential properties um, and understanding that there is an elevation change and it's not like, you know, I don't know how effectively or how quickly landscaping would be able to soften that. Um, and I need to look at that more closely with the landscaping plan. But the um, if there was a way maybe to break up the back a little bit, I mean, I know it's the back of the building and the more things that you add to it, the more expensive it is. But, you know, in a, in a reasonable way, if there was maybe something to do to make it look a little bit more appealing from, from the backside for the residential properties without getting too crazy with it. Yeah, so the, the challenge we have is is that you know, from a landscaping standpoint, there's two tiers of retaining wall that exist on that site. And the, the upper one is right on the property line. So let's just say that their elevation changes uh, equal. So it's about six feet, to six and a half feet for each of those segments of retaining wall. Mm -hmm. uh, and then 
the residents up above, I believe, also have, uh, you know, a fence along their south property line. So it, it almost seems to me that we would open for discussion regarding actually doing, because the, <clears throat> the retaining wall is directly on the property line. Uh, we would open the discussion about whether we do that screening up actually on the southern edge of the residential parcels that front this. So if we were required to build a six foot high fence, we would propose to do it actually on the residential properties themselves because we don't have space to build a wall between our property. It's the, the retaining wall is actually on uh, the property line. And I'll just bring up the the survey which shows that. So this is the grading plan. So it doesn't, um, I'll highlight, there's a re existing retaining wall that runs right here. And at that location and then there's another one right on right on the property line. So and then you'll see here there's a a fence on this property line or from this property up above on the high side. So we don't really, I mean, we, when you ask for a six foot wall, we actually have two of them already on this parcel. So, and I know they don't do any screening because the residential property is higher. So I guess the question would be is whether, you know, for, from a discussion standpoint, whether if this that's, <laughs> it's definitely a complicated situation that's this is going to be an issue with any development on this site but it would be nice to and, and we'll open it up to the to the uh, community to see if there's anybody from uh, that area that would like to speak to this application but it would be nice to have i'm sure you, it would be easy to come up with some pictures of what these residents will be looking at as they look down on the site that'd be useful to have at the uh, subcommittee meeting mr Martin. yeah we would we'll put together i mean we've have this building model you know right digitally and we'll add the site context of getting up at least not specifically to each one of those parcels with a photo but we can model to the topography right. and what it's like to look from that so and and maybe give some consideration to the the architectural features on the north building wall that face the residential. Well, the thing is, is that the top of that wall is a, yeah. um, it's a couple of feet above the top of this. And so, you know, at the, at the grade line. So it's, uh, um, I don't know, it's a challenge. I think if, if they really don't want to see what's going on down here, we're going to have to do something at the top of the wall. Right, but, but what I'm saying is like, if assuming if they can see your building in the back of the building, if the back of the building is more than just a blank gray or sand colored wall, it might be more visually appealing without making it as fancy, obviously, as your front elevation. Do, are you following like the actual building itself, the architectural features on the building? Yep, I understand. Okay, thank you. I had a question, if possible. Mr. Ritter? Uh, so I guess looking at the numbers and the elevations, so I guess the top of the building uh, at the 119 foot zero is going to be roughly three to four foot above the top of that hillside. Is that? That's correct. Is that, uh, that's correct. Okay. Um, what about a, a six foot, uh, possibly a six foot screening on the back of the building to try and I don't know if that'd be, I don't know how much that would help to try and 
You mean to raise this wall higher? Raise the raise the back of it just to give more screening to the roof, possibly. I don't know if aesthetically how that's going to look. I guess would be. A... Yeah. So that's already a three to four foot parapet. So the, mm. the taller portion in the center here is uh, where the pool is. So the ceilings, you know, we have a little higher screening there because the the rooftop equipment is a little taller in that location. No. Yep. But overall, we're uh, we're already, especially in this middle section, we're at about four four feet of uh, parapet. So if we did another six feet on top of that, uh, now we're, I mean, that's, uh, that's, let's just say it's getting to be a challenge structurally. I guess, would you have any mechanical drones showing the equipment and layout on the roof as far as that? Um, we don't, I don't have that readily available right now, but we can that's, certainly yeah. have that all put together for the planning and zoning. And the, yeah, just to try and have a better perspective of what the roof's going to look like. Yeah, we'll um, model the entire building. We'll include the rooftop equipment in the model so that we're looking at exactly what we're proposing. So. Okay, good okay. deal. Well, I'll look forward to seeing that. Any Mr. other commission? Yeah, uh, let's see. Jeff. Like you, uh, Mr. Moore? Yeah, just related to um, Mr. Ritter's questioning, um, has there been any, or should there be any concern about the noise that the rooftop equipment generates? And outside of the HVAC system, does the, the pool system have anything on the roof that would run at odd hours or create addition, any noise that's... Um, could disturb the neighborhood behind. Yeah, from an operational standpoint, all the uh, all the pool equipment is inside in an enclosed room, uh, and it's just a series of pumps and uh, filters. And so we are not aware of any noise really from the pool equipment itself. And on the roof that. And the equipment that we're concerned about is strictly HVAC for the building. Correct. Uh, that answers my question. Okay, very good. Uh, before we open it up to the audience to see if there's any, maybe some citizens to the north or otherwise, is, are there any other commissioners that have any questions? I had a question. Mr. Shipley. A uh, uh, question for Mr. O'Halloran. I looked at the Foss Swim School corporate website and it jumped out at me that there is a current Brentwood Little Fishes as part of your ecosystem. Um, is that going to go away when this one opens? I'm curious. And then, by the way, uh, kudos that Brentwood Little Fishes and the other two local uh, Foss Swim Schools are about 4.9 out of 5 on Google. Um, which is encouraging that the uh, your 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 customers are, are very happy with with what they're getting. You didn't see any real negative reviews on any of those. But on the little fishes, is, is uh, tell me about how that fits together with the, the swim school. Yeah, thank you for your question and thanks for your your feedback on the on the Google reviews. Always good to get positive feedback from our customer base. Um, the in when we entered the market in October of 2018, we purchased Little Fish of Swim Schools. Um, they have two locations, one in Brentwood and one in Chesterfield. Um, with the addition of this particular location being a Foss Swim School in the Brentwood market, we would uh, we would back up operations at that current Little Fish of Swim School and, and move our customer base over to the Foss Swim School um, at this location. Thank you. Thank you. Good detective work there, Mr. Shipley. Any other commissioners have any questions before we open it up to the audience for comment? Let's build her back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I wanted to mention that I really love the staff's idea in the staff report as far as having a provision uh, for that eastern part of the property and the creek area that if it wasn't maintained that the city could could step in and take care of it and charge back. I, I thought that that was really uh, good foresight, you know, not anticipating any problems, but, you know, given some other things in the past, I think that was really smart. And I also wanted to say that even, you know, despite my questions, and I was going to ask the, the noise question too, um, 
despite my questions with that, like I recognize that this is a difficult site and it's very unusual to have that elevation difference. Um, and I think, at least from my perspective as a commission member, that I think it's great that we have this proposal. It's great that it's been so well thought out. And I also wouldn't automatically assume without um, kind of putting on a little bit of another hat, but without seeing any responses to the RFP from the Brentwood Bound and 353 effort, I, I wouldn't automatically assume that there's going to be um, a major clamoring for this particular piece. Um, I mean, you never know. And, and I'm, you know, I haven't been fielding the phone calls like the, the city staff has, but uh, it seems to me like that this, this could kind of fit in with some of the things that have been talked about for that area and what the general market is that we've been trying to attract. So, I mean, obviously we'll have to, to see what happens. Um, and I also love the, the monument idea. I, I thought that looked cool and I looked at the elevations or, and information about that as well. So I just wanted to add those additional comments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Is there anyone from the audience that would like to address the commission on this application? Uh, Brad Schneider would, has raised his hand. Okay, Mr. Schneider, uh, you can proceed. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, please take your address if you could for the record. Uh, we are at uh, 8002 Fawn Court. So uh, Mr. Moran, you asked if uh, any of the northbound neighbors had received notice uh, and we're here to give some thought. Okay. I, uh, I don't know if any of my fellows are, and I can't speak for them. Uh, you know, these are obviously my wife and I's comments only, but um, we've looked through the proposal. We received the notice. Again, as noted, the mail is um, less reliable than one might think, but to the, you know, we, we did receive notice and this seems to be the best proposal I've seen in the three years that we've been here. Um, this, I mean, also just as a background thing, uh, we have a 14 month, uh, month old son who until the outbreak went to Little Fishes and we love it. Uh, please, you know, I know we can't build it in, but if you could take the, the staff from over there, uh, you know, we'd, we, we, we'd uh, come on back. So uh, I, I know we really appreciate uh, the commission's concerns regarding, you know, our, our quality of life, our view and uh, the noise. Obviously we have concerns, uh, noise study, light study, um, but as a general concept, this really has our full support. Um, again, I can't speak for my neighbors, but we'd be happy to discuss working with uh, Voss, you know, regarding maybe a fence at the top of the retaining wall. That seems to be the most logical and least um, invasive for everybody as long as everybody's on board. So uh, also, Mr. Meyer, to the extent that you may have someone locally, if it'll help the commission, you're welcome to uh, come take photos from our backyard. Uh, but uh, this, you know, subject to all the usual questions ab about details, this seems to be a really good plan. Uh, this is better than a car wash. This is better than auto repair. This is, you know, and, and I'm sure the request for proposals will yield some interesting possibilities, but this, this feels like something we can live with. And with the appropriate safeguards, I can't imagine uh, causing too much of a fuss about this. So um, thank you very much. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Schneider. If you could please provide your contact information to Ms. Kirkemeyer after the meeting or tomorrow, uh, and then Ms. Kirkemeyer can give that to Mr. O'Halloran as well as uh, Mr. Meyer. And absolutely, we are always in favor of, uh, of, of trying to connect 
uh, implicated neighbors, implicated homeowners with the developer. So uh, I ho hope I'm, I'm confident that Mr. O'Halloran and Mr. Meyer would be receptive to that as well. Yeah, uh, Ms. Kirkmeyer, I think you may have my information, but I'll go ahead and email it to you anyway. Very uh, good. Great. Yeah, thank you, sir. Sure. That was part of the Brentwood Bound thing this okay, good. and really well. Good. Very well, good. So thank you very much. Very good. Thank you. Are there any other citizens that would like to address the commission on this application? No other citizens have raised their hand. Very good. Thank you. Uh, are there any other commissioners understanding that we have uh, to a scheduled subcommittee meeting coming up here in two weeks from today? Uh, are there any other commissioners that want to make their thoughts known tonight? Mr. Moran, you're on mute. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. It's just a quick question for Lisa. Is, is everything you've seen so far consistent with what we have in the comprehensive plan in terms of setback from the road and everything else with the Manchester Road Corridor? Uh, yes. I mean, it, it, was, it was kind of really interesting to uh, review this proposal because this was the first official one for the new MC zoning district and um, so just from the, the technical side of it and just the bulk area requirements and so forth it uh, it meets all of the setback requirements that we desire to see in the MC district and um, it also comes down to the building elevations and the use of building materials and um, all the materials that have been uh, uh, put on the plan for what, how the building will be constructed and everything. Everything is acceptable. I think we may have to look a little bit at some of the, the use of the EFIS material, but again, all the building materials are acceptable. Um, so the, those kind of things, certainly it, it met the MC zoning district. There is a lot of, there's a lot of good stuff still in that MC zoning district, but some of it really is more for the properties that develop on the south side of Manchester because of different things that uh, will involve trying to do some connections to the park amenities and things like that. But yeah, it, it, um, it looks like a, a fairly good proposal. So. Okay, very good. Is there anything else? Anyone else want to bring anything up tonight? Otherwise, uh, Mr. O'Halloran, Mr. Meyer, we will, uh, we appreciate the application. We appreciate the diligence you put into the application. You've been working on this for a long time, uh, as we saw from the timeline this evening. And we look forward to working with you through this process. Are you available for a subcommittee meeting on the 28th at 6 p.m.? Yes, I'm available. Okay. Uh, I would anticipate that this would be by re remote, remotely again. Is that right, Ms. Kirkemeyer? That's what we're planning on, yes. Okay, well, so be it. Uh, so yeah, if you could, Mr. O'Holler and Mr. Meyer, if you could please uh, reach out to Mr. Schneider and his wife. Um, I, I, we value their opinions very strongly on this commission uh, as with any of the citizens. So please, uh, please do accommodate them to the extent possible. But otherwise we'll look forward to seeing, uh, seeing the results of that communication, seeing the pictures of the roof that Mr. Schneider and his neighbors will be seeing uh, from their residences and seeing the parking study, traffic study, and landscape study as well. On the 28th at 6 p.m. Commissioners, are you all available? Yes. All right, very good. Okay, very good. We'll look forward to seeing you then. Why don't we go ahead and finish up this agenda. Uh, city, let's see, Aldermanic report. I see no alderman. City planners report. Uh, Chairman, I just wanted to make mention that we had discussed about when we would have to move the November meeting day due to Veterans Day on the 11th. So um, I've already sent some information out that we would move that to November 18th, which I hope that works out because that does give this project kind of an extra week to kind of just get all the, the details in order. So if that still works for the rest of the commission at six o'clock. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Kirkemeyer. Uh, subcommittee on the 28th. We'll look forward to seeing everybody again then. Uh, we have no rationale. Is there any other business this evening? If not, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Bilderback, second by second. Mr. Nelson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, we stand adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody. Good seeing you. Have a good evening, all. See you, everybody.